This module is about spatial estimation in GIS. The learning objectives covered by this module include spatial estimation and sampling, and then three types of spatial estimation, namely spatial interpolation, spatial prediction, and core mapping. So first of all, what is spatial estimation? It is a process of finding approximate value of an unknown spatial quantity using some known values um, of the quantity at other places. Or it could be known quantities of uh, known other quantities at uh, other places. So for example, in this case, we have some point data which we went out there and collected. And the process of spatial estimation helps us create a continuous surface by estimating values at the points where we did not make a measurement. So why do we need spatial estimation? Well, first of all, we, don't, we cannot collect data everywhere. Um, it's not possible. We also don't have data available all the times. So estimation helps us fill the gaps in the sample, in the data that we have sampled. For example, if we have a time series data on a daily basis then or every other day basis, then we can fill the intermediate points by using the known uh, values. Similarly, if we went out there and collected some sample data um, spatially, we can find an unknown location by using these known uh, measurements. And some of the reasons why we have sample gaps is that often we have limited time or um, resources to go out there and uh, collect data everywhere. Um, and then we also sometimes run into locations that are not reachable. So we have, to, we have no other choice but to use some kind of estimation to get the quantities at unreachable points. And these unreachable points could be also caught because of a safety um, or they're not sometimes they're unsafe to reach at um, and that's another reason for the gaps in the sampling um, sometimes our instruments break um, and while they were broken there is no data and it needs to be filled using estimation um, other times we have some old data that needs to be uh, replaced with the corrected values estimated through sampling um, or estimation, uh, spatial estimation. And then when we change the resolution of raster data, especially when we go to a higher resolution, it creates gaps and those need to be filled using some form of spatial estimation. So many reasons why we need to learn this. Um, there are three basic types of spatial estimation. The first one is spatial interpolation. In this case, we have known values um, at some sample points and we need to find out the unmeasured value of the same quantity at a new point. So if this is elevation then we are trying to estimate elevation at a new point. If it's temperature we're trying to find temperature at the new point. So same quantity. But that's not the case in spatial prediction. In case of spatial prediction we use uh, un a set of variables to find an unmeasured data. So for example, we might be interested in uh, the um, temperature of air at this point, and it may be related to um, other variables that can be used to predict its value. So for example, we if we measure air temperature using elevation and air density, that would be spatial prediction. If we measure air temperature using air temperature at the other locations, that would be interpolation. So I hope this makes sense that in case of prediction, we are using uh, other variables to measure a variable of interest. And third one is a core area mapping. And in this case, we estimate based upon the high probability of occurrence or more occurrence versus less. Uh, for example, a criminal activity core area map. So in this case, uh, the red will show high activity or high occurrence and the orange will show less yellow, blues will be lesser values. 
And in all of these cases, we are taking some sample points and converting them into uh, data by measuring, estimating in particular at unknown, unmeasured points. And there are a couple of things about sampling that we need to, to learn. So sampling is a, a process in which we collect a subset data set which is a representative of the whole data set. So we choose selected points uh, in this process. For example, when we install a rain gauge or many rain gauges in a watershed, we are measuring at selected points, but those rain gauge values or those rain values are representative of the whole process over the whole watershed. So sampling helps us um, find data that represents some larger data set. And there are four types of samplings that we will learn in this class. Systematic sampling, random sampling, cluster sampling, and adaptive sampling. In case of sy systematic sampling, which is the simplest sampling, we just follow a fixed interval. For example, we take data hourly or we collect data every mile. Um, this picture kind of shows a regular grid, so there is no um, variability of the sampling points. We just follow a fixed pattern. There are advantages and disadvantages of this method. It's easy, the advantages are that it's easy to understand, it's easy to plan, and there is very little subjectivity in the judgment of finding the points for sampling. But it also has disadvantages. It's, first of all, it's going to be very costly to go at to all of these points, it, so it's not very efficient. Um, secondly, all points are receiving equal attention. Um, all of these areas seem to have the same elevation and we probably would have been fine if we measured one location, one elevation here. Um, and so it can also be difficult to follow the pattern. For example, this is a, a canyon, so these points, we may not be able to get to these points, so um, these most likely will be skipped. And because it's following a fixed pattern and we're not paying attention to the profile of the surface itself, there might be some biases introduced because of that. The other type of sampling is random sampling. In this case, we are not following any pattern. It's totally random. So the locations are generated on a random basis. Maybe you're walking and you keep flipping a coin and if it lands head, that's when you take the sample, otherwise you keep moving. Um, so that definitely, the advantage is that it takes away the bias uh, of any sort. Um, but, um, and also it, it's uh, unlikely that you'll end up following any pattern on the ground. But there are some disadvantages as well. So um, it, it does not distribute the points based upon some inherent variability in the, in the, in the, on the surface. So that kind of may not give you the opportunity to give attention to all points or some points may not get chosen. Um, and then it can be difficult to explain uh, the random process because it, it, it is not based on a, any physical information. And sometimes you have to train the crew to, to be able to perform this kind of random uh, sampling. The third one is cluster sampling. So in this case, we select some points um, through a process, maybe random process or systematic sampling, but then we drive over to there and then we take a few samples and then move on to our next point, take a few samples to the next point. So um, this involves, uh, the advantages are it involves less traveling uh, because we go to a point and may spend a few minutes to collect data and then we again move on to the next one. Um, and um, these cluster centers can be chosen randomly or through systematic process. Uh, but it also has disadvantage that the um, it, it depends on the selection of cluster centers and it could be prone to miss high variability areas. For example, we will totally miss this uh, high slope area in this part of the, the, the region. The last one is adaptive sampling. This is probably the most efficient one among all because in this case we select points based upon the variability. If the area is flat, we don't have to select too many points. But when it starts to slope, 
then we know that the variability is increasing so we increase our repetition of sampling um, this of course has its disadvantages as well we need to know the spatial variability before we go, go out there in the field or we have to train people to recognize the spatial variability uh, which is more of an art than science so that covers the four uh, sampling methods and these are the sampling methods with which we collect data and then we use spatial interpolation or prediction or core area mapping to create continuous surfaces.